Bardat, the Bar Ilan University podcast. Hello and welcome to Bardat. The miracle of Tzfat. Is that what happened to the city of Tzfat during the events of the War of Independence when it was occupied by Arab forces after the British army left the city? We are here today to talk about the city of Tzfat during the War of Independence with Dr. Barak Books, Senior Research Fellow in the Europa Institute and a lecturer in the School of Communication and a lecturer in the Department of Political Studies. Hello, Barak. Hello, good afternoon. So your main research doesn't relate to history, but today we're going to talk about Tzfat. Why? Why yes. Tzfat? My name is Dr. Barak Books. I serve as a senior research fellow at the Europa Institute and a lecturer at the School of Communications and the Department of Political Studies at Bar Ilan University. Although I live in the central parts of Israel, I am eight generations of the ancient Jewish congregation in Tzfat, the city which I was raising and educated on. My grandfather, Pesach Shmuel Zal, was the Gabai of Ari Ashkenazi Kadosh Synagogue and also the secretary of the Jewish Communities uh, Committee in Tzfat, which was literally a committee like a government of the Jews in a city on which there was a majority of Arabs. The head of the committee, Rabbi Moshe Pedatsu, was the first Jewish mayor of Tzfat. I must note only one thing, that my grandfather, although had this religious background, we always in Tzfat managed to combine regular living. My grandfather was the, one of the founders of the First International Bank and the religious aspect. This is the symbol of our uh, Tzfat residents. <laughs> Barak, can you tell us shortly about the history of Tzfat? Yes, Tzfat is a city located in the northern parts of Israel in the Galilee, and always throughout the years Jews lived in Tzfat. It is very famous for Harya Kadosh, Rabbi uh, Yitzhak Ben Shlomo Luria, or Rabbi Yosef Karo, the author of uh, Shulchan Aruch. And uh, we're talking about the period of uh, Kaftet Ben November, November 29th, on which we can map 1,800 uh, Jews, Uh, which is, uh, were surrounded by 12,000 Arabs, to which, to them, uh, we can add all of the Arab villages surrounding Tzfat. The community had very good, uh, rich, religious and spiritual living, but everybody worked and had a profession. For instance, my grandfather was uh, one of the fo- founders of uh, the inter- first Habank Ben Lumi Arishon, the first international bank uh, in Israel. But... The community had also very hard hardships by men and by nature. We can talk about Praot, as Tarpat, as the Great Arab Rebellion in which uh, Jews from Tzfat, Jewish congregation, were killed by Arabs. And Tzfat also endured some uh, very hard earthquakes at the beginning of the 19th century in 1837 and at the end of the 19th century. They demolished the city totally. And uh, also famines, hunger, and the First World War that uh, deteriorated the number of Jews living in Tzfat. When I'm talking about 1947, this is following a short recuperation, but also Jews were a minority surrounded by Arabs geographically. The Jewish quarter was surrounded by Arab neighborhoods, and uh, they controlled all of these strategic points. So you are basically tell us that there were a lot of struggle for the Jews in Tzfat. We can say that the Jews... Uh, Although all of these hardships insisted on living in Tzfat and did not leave the city, albeit all of these hardships, killing, earthquakes, famines, etc., many left, but many stayed. This is the motto that uh, accompanied all of us in the Jewish congregation throughout our years in Tzfat. So we described the history of Tzfat. Let's go a little bit forward and... We are now talking about uh, November 47. At this time, UN decided to partition uh, the land, and around the decision, Tzfat had a lot of hardships and uh, struggle, right? Yes. First of all, uh, I would like to describe a little bit the situation prior to the decision to partition the land. Uh, we had in Tzfat the uh, Jewish committee, Vada Kila, on which my grandfather was the secretary, and the... Uh, The 
Jewish committee was headed by Rabbi Moshe Pedatsur, the first Jewish mayor of Tzfat following 48. But in these days, the Jewish community ran the affairs of the Jews that living in Tzfat as a minority. Uh, Rabbi Moshe Pedatsur had learned that throughout the negotiations in the UN towards the decision, the final decision to, uh, which was to partition the land, Tzfat was considered as a part, as a city in the Arab country, not the Jewish country. The uh, definition, an informal definition, was that Tzfat will be a part of the Arab country, but it will be defined as an open city on which Jews can live under the patronage of the uh, Arab country. We all know the meaning of that. And there was a lot of pressure by Jews from Tzfat uh, to a uh, key protagonist in the Israeli Shuv, culminating with Moshe Sharet that ran all of the negotiations at the UN Center. And Tzfat was a part of the Jewish state following the decision in 1947 to partition the land. Following that, Jews abstained from going to the uh, Arab parts of the city, which were the majority of the city. But I want to talk about a key event that symbolized the uh, changes in the lives of the Jews in Tzfat. On December 13th, one of the Jewish Haganah members, Menachem Mizrahi, uh, crossed the informal border between the Jewish quarter and the Arab majority of the city in order to learn about the Arab plannings of the future. They discovered him, killed him, and left him to bleed to death not far from the uh, first uh, outpost of the Jews, which saw uh, everything. They then took his body, and we do not know where he's buried until today, following all of these years. I want to talk about the importance of these events because not long ago, lately, uh, there was a ceremony in Tzfat of uh, calling a street on behalf of his name run by a member of the family. Many family members were there, which are friends, personal friends of my family. We live together. It was culminating with the uh, mayor of Tzfat, Shuki Ochana, and his vice mayor, uh, Shlomo Haddad, and other which are uh, first of all, a family friend that uh, played, which is a descendant of Rabbi Zilberman, Dov Zilberman, but other persons as advocate Dr. Nisan Sharifi and Mr. Ben Tovin that are located until today missing persons, and they are still looking for his body. Meaning the family was so, almost burst out and literally burst out in tears. These events are encrypted in our uh, general memory. <laughs> So the questions after what you just described us, did the British army left the city? Yes. First of all, originally the British uh, had their mandate until August 1948. And when uh, the UN decided to partition the land, the British uh, set a new date to May. But in the Galilee, they decided to depart and leave in April. And in, it was by surprise, by the way. In April 16th, the Jewish community, uh, their committee, uh, held a very hard meeting because the High General uh, Brigadier Kohn of the British forces in the Galilee came and offered to evacuate all the women and children from Tzfat, leaving only a small number of uh, Jewish defenders. And the Jewish community uh, the meaning is no more a Jewish uh, organized community in Tzfat. The committee had a very hard meeting. Very hard. Because they all remembered uh, what happened when uh, the Arab forces entered and massacred Jews. And the British high commander, how do you say, played on that. Meaning he said, when he learned that the Jews had decided to stay, and I'm quoting, who are you? You're a group of elderly religious Jews. Who are you to define the instruction of His Majesty's representative? Who do you think you are? He was very mad because the Jews decided to stay and fight for their homes. And the meaning was very hard. So what is the meaning of this decision to stay in the city, to stay in Tzfat? I can say from my personal prism of my grandfather, Pesach Shmuel, uh, who was the Gabay of uh, Ari Synagogue, which was, let's say, without shelters in Tzfat, was the main uh, shelter of uh, the neighborhood. Until nowadays, I must note, there is a bullet hole uh, next to the uh, Tiva in the entrance from the war. And the meaning is that the Jewish community decided on a very, very hard decision that can mean 
uh, if the uh, city will lose the war, uh, very hard uh, consequences. But we had to fight for our homes because us as Jews were the caretakers of the ancient synagogues, the Jewish quarter, and we endured so many troubles by men and by nature. But the main instruction and the idea by uh, rabbis and by our uh, leaders was we do not leave Tzfat, we stay in Tzfat. We didn't have any other choice. And the responsibility was very hard. But I can say that this decision of uh, Rabbi Moshe Pedatsu, the head of the committee members, and my grandfather, the secretary, was uh, to take care of the city. How did the British army leave the city? In April 16th, the British uh, began to evacuate the city quickly. There was a small number of Palmach soldiers uh, not far from Tzfat, mm -hmm. and they discovered it by uh, surprise because the British army uh, handed over strategic points to the Arab forces. We can say that the war was very hard, and I want to note something about the importance of religious tolerance and religious uh, leadership. The Rebbe of Tzfat, Rebbe Avrum Leib Zilberman, died, and uh, he had uh, somebody, Zayd al-Heller, which was his... Uh, he, did, he was not the rabbi, but he was in charge of the uh, religious, uh, let's say, section. And he gave a, a verdict that uh, because it was Shabbat, but it was a war on the Jews' lives, because the Arabs began to break in, the Jews could work and dig uh, some uh, defense and wage the war in order to defend their lives. Pikuach Nefesh Dochei Shabbat. Of course, it was a very hard Pikuach Nefesh because the war was very severe. And the Palmach had a very hard war, headed by Elad Peled, and the commander of Tzfat was Meir Meval. Palmach's forces, following a very hard battle with uh, many casualties, also in the Tzfat defenders, the Jews, uh, they entered the Jewish quarter, early Shabbat morning by singing Anwa Palmach. This was a direct order of Elad Peled in order to raise the morale of the defenders of the uh, Jewish quarter of Tzfat. Barak, it sounds like it was some kind of a miracle because it was a war between so many against few people in Tzfat, few uh, Jews in Tzfat. How can you describe it? Literally by the miracle of Tzfat. And why? Because the Battle of Tzfat, following a very hard siege, began on May 9th. Following on May 10th, the uh, entrance of Palmach forces, as I said. But they discovered that the Arabs departed. The majority of the Arab forces, backed by armies, not as the state of Israel uh, on uh, May 14th or 15th, but literally there were Syrian, uh, Iraqi forces, and even uh, forces from Lebanon. And all of them left with all of the Arab uh, citizens or uh, residents of Tzfat. The miracle is not of their living, but of the uh, salvation, salvage of the Jews, which literally under any strategic assessment were almost bound to be butchered by the majority of the forces. Why did they leave? I can note a few reasons. One of them, the Davidka cannon, which is an inaccurate cannon that made a lot of noise and smoke, but one of its, let's say, shells landed at the command of Adib Shishakli, the commander of uh, the Arab forces, at the Saraya government building. He decided following that to depart. There is the regular uh, notion that uh, the majority of the Arabs, if not all of them, follow the instruction that the Jews are a minority and in one or two weeks we will uh, finish the job and you can return to your homes. But there is another legend, and very interesting one, about the Jewish atom bomb. It yes, sounds yes. surreal. Yes, yes, the Jewish A-bomb. What do I mean about that? We all know the uh, use of an atom bomb following the Second World War. We're talking about less than three years following that war. And the Arabs believed in the scheme that Jews are practically running the world and they have a secret weapon. To that, I'm adding the very unique 
uh, atmospheric climax of a very sunny day at the beginning of May, no cloud in the sky, which literally immediately was changing into a stormy weather with clouds and lightnings and the very hard rain. So the Arabs were, let's say, thinking or promoted the notion or the idea that the Jews used something very uh, unique, a secret weapon. Some of them attributed that to the use of uh, Jews uh, of uh, maybe an atom bomb. Now, we're monitoring that following 75 years, but we have to remember that way back then, we had only a few hours of radio broadcasts, no television, some news reels in the cinema, but most of the population was not exposed to the media as we are, culminating with the A-bomb being a very new weapon. And the miracle of Tzfat is that the Jews, literally like in Purim, or in uh, the miracle of Hanukkah, from a, let's say, a, a conclusion that they're going to be butchered by the majority forces of the Arab forces here, managed to stay, and their decision was correct, and Jews are still living in Tzfat until today. And Tzfat is a part, a very proud part of the state of Israel. Barak, what is the lesson from the miracle of Tzfat? We can talk about uh, a few conclusions. First of all, self-reliance. The state of Israel and Jews all over the world should rely upon themselves. Nobody will help us. As nobody helped us in 48, we can always have the, and should, have the ability to defend ourselves and also to know and learn about any potential danger to our existence and developing the ability to meet the potential danger. And finally, the story of Tzfat teaches us that in the regular decision-making processes, we sometimes need to go outside of the regular box and uh, look for unique ways to arrive at very hard decisions, period. Dr. Barak Books, a lecturer in the School of Communication and a lecturer in the Department of Political Studies. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. On our Bardaat app, you can find other intriguing podcasts on similar subjects and also in totally different areas of knowledge. Come and discover them. Bardaat, Bar Ilan University's podcast app. Edited by Dor Comet. Chief Producer, Ori Toledano. <music>